Hey everyone, Darren Eastman here, Product Manager for GitLab Runner. For today's speed run, we're going to cover the setup and use of GitLab Runner on AWS Fargate. Specifically, we'll cover a few of the key steps in our documentation here, specifically installing a GitLab Runner on an AWS EC2 instance, configuring the runner in the AWS Fargate driver, installing the AWS Fargate driver for the custom executor, and creating ECS DAS definition, which we will need obviously for running our containers on Fargate. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a quick um, demonstration of a test pipeline run that will be executing on that container that um, is created at runtime on AWS Fargate. The um, auto scaling GitLab CI um, solution for AWS Fargate, we actually released that in the 12.10 release. And there are actually some enhancements coming as well in future releases. So I thought it was a good time for us to do a quick speed run and kind of do a quick overview of the setup um, processes and just like a quick intro in terms of how it works. Uh, as you can see in this diagram here in our documentation, for our MVC implementation of this solution, um, we are using uh, an EC2 instance on AWS to host GitLab Runner, um, the actual binary, and the related GitLab Runner Fargate driver. Uh, and then that solution is what's um, um, using AWS Fargate um, for um, creating containers and for executing your CI jobs. Uh, in a future iteration of this video, we'll probably cover um, using um, AWS Fargate to also host a runner. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's going to be a, there's an interesting link here um, from a blog post that was put together that also that covers the deployment pattern. So we'll probably cover that in the next speed run. Um, so the documentation and steps that we will be going through today are actually covered in our auto scaling GitLab CI on AWS Fargate docs, which is found here in our in our runner doc site. So docs.gitlab.com slash runner. And you go to configure um, and then you'll see the link here uh, auto scaling GitLab, GitLab CI on AWS Fargate. Um, so for this example, we're just going to drive right to it. I already have uh, an EC2 instance I'm ready to go on, on AWS. So I'll just go ahead and jump into the, the, the installation steps. So the first thing that we're going to do is run this command. And all of the commands that I'm running here are again covered in detail um, in the um, configuration docs. And you can see right here, um, there are the commands. So these are the set of commands we're running to go ahead and get the um, AWS, the get that running driver, uh, the get that running configure along with the driver on, on, on the AWS. So that's the first step. I'm getting the directories created. And then the next step, we're going to actually go ahead and pull in the packages that we need. Okay, now once that's done, we're actually going to install GitLab Runner. So it's a very simple command, sudo apt install GitLab Runner. Again, those commands are covered here in the install steps. And we can see that it's pulling down um, the very latest version of, of the actual runner, which is 13.1.1. .1. Oh, brilliant. So once that's complete, the next step, as uh, indicated here in Docs, is that we register that GitLab runner. Now, if you recall, the registration steps is what connects the GitLab runner um, on, that, that you set up that you installed with a GitLab project in your own GitLab instance. So in this case, I'll be connecting to a project that I already have set up on GitLab.com. And so I'm going to run the GitLab runner register command. And to that, it's going to ask me for the token. I have set up a test repo on gitlab.com. So I'm going to just enter the token for that project repo and um, enter a quick description for this runner. So AWS Fargate um, runner, I guess it's good enough. Um, tags, I think I'll just say Node.js for now. And let's leave it at that. And the, the next step here is, and the final step is asking for the executor. Um, we want to use custom um, because we'll be configuring the GitLab runner to use the custom executor driver. So now that's successfully done, we move on to the next step, which we just want to need a quick edit of the GitLab runner config.toml file. Um, 
And as you see here in the docs, we have to add some sections into the runners runners that custom section of the config that tunnel to enable it to use the um, the file gate driver. So let's go ahead and get that done. Let's go here. And just get the section that we need in here. I don't need all this. Yes, yeah, I probably need that. I guess I should copy that over as well. We'll just type it in really fast. And then we enter the last set of the configuration. So that's basically all we need in order to use the um, the file driver that we'll install in the next step. Go ahead and save this file. And while we're at it, the next thing we want to do is we actually want to edit the file.tunnel file. The file.tunnel file is actually a configuration file that we need to use for the file driver. I just cut the contents in this just to get things going. Now, the only change needs to be how I just need to remove the private key path. Uh, we will no longer be using that because we're making a change to simplify the SSH key configurations. Um, and the other thing that you need to enter here um, is your file gate cluster. So in my example, I'm just going to quickly pop over so you can have a, you can see it visually on the screen. In ECS, I'm going to be using this file gate cluster. I'm just calling it test file gate. So I want to tell the file gate driver that that's the, the cluster I'll be using on ECS. In my case, it's USB S2. And um, you'd also want to enter your subnet, your subnet IDs, task definitions, and so on. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to change the task definition just for the example because I actually want to set up the ECS task definition. So let's call this um, node-js, I guess. Let's have a look. I think I have a name and I already had set up. Let's call it um, this. Okay. And then the final step, and I, in, in terms of getting this set up, would actually be pulling in the um, the file gate driver. So when the file gate driver is installed, the last step again, going back to installation docs, would be and this is a changing the permissions on the executable. So at this stage, the file gate driver is ready to go. The other thing that we just need to quickly do, pop over and over in ECS, is to go ahead and create a task definition. So um, I'm just gonna run through a very simple example here in terms of creating a task definition so you can get a feel for how simple it is. And of course, all of these steps on, AC, on, on AWS, you can certainly automate. I mean, the purpose of, the, of this video, we're just kind of doing it manually so you can, you can follow along and understand kind of what's actually happening um, before you actually um, introduce automation into it. So in terms of creating a new task definition here in ECS, you want to choose file gate as the launch type. Um, file task definition name, we want to keep it consistent. Right. I already have a role that I have in mind, I've already set up here on ECS. But the task size is really up to you in terms of, you know, kind of how much compute and memory you think you need for the containers that will be executing your CI jobs on, on, on AWS FileGate. Um, you can certainly play around with these settings and, and, and see which if what the performance in, um, uh, impacts are in terms of using different memory and CPU sizes. Uh, for this, I'll just go something like this. I think that's the right one. Oh, I think for one gigabyte, it's 0.5, that's right. Um, and then the important thing now is that you want to add the container definition into this. 
So the container name that we, want, that we need to use, and this is expected by the Fargo driver CI coordinator. I'm going to pop over here and say port mappings of 22 to allow SSH connections in. And then the last step that you want to put in here is the repo for the, the, the repository um, for um, for your container. Uh, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I have a copy of that pump over here. So we grab the repo. I actually have an image stored in AWS. I'm just going to grab that. You can certainly have your image stored anywhere else as well. And that's that. And I create a new task definition is done. So now at this point, you have the basic building blocks to use this configuration that we have described here which is an EC2 instance that's hosting a GitLab runner along with the Fargate driver, and then is able to use AWS Fargate to spin up a, uh, a build container. Um, really fast, I thought it would be interesting for the example pipeline that I'm going to show, um, and the documentation talks about this as well. In step one, it says, hey, you, want to, you need to prepare a base container image to use on AWS Fargate. The container image, image that I just showed uh, in the previous step is show you an example of what a Docker file looks like for that. So we use we create our, our own Docker file here. And so we're using Node 12.16 as the base. And then we're also installing GitLab runner binary into that container image as well. And that's because we need that to be able to interact with the main GitLab runner manager for things like artifact management and so on. Okay, so at this point, it's set up. So with those couple of very straightforward steps, you're now able to, to experiment with and use AWS Fargate to, to run or execute your CI jobs from GitLab. I'm going to have a quick look at, at how that works, uh, what that looks like in reality. So I'm going to go back to AWS. Let's have a look at the clusters. Right now I have a clusters ready to go. And you look at this stats. So right now in this AWS, in my AWS test Fargate cluster, um, there are no running tasks, everything's been shut down. Um, what I'm gonna do on this time is just basically kick off a pipeline. This particular project has already been configured to use um, a runner that's is configured on, on AWS along with the Fargate driver. So I'm just gonna run that pipeline. And We'll see what's happening as the pipeline is running. And let's keep refreshing the screen over here. Ah, it's already kicked off the task. So here in the longs, the active longs, you're seeing it's preparing the custom executive driver. And over here in AWS, in the cluster, the task definition that we had prepared previously, it's, it's now launching that task or that container. And so obviously with this model, the good thing with this model is that you'll only be using resources on AWS Fargate when you initiate a CI build job, a CI job. Um, and so there's a little bit of a, a slight, you know, a few seconds, I uh, have we've noticed a few seconds obviously in terms of that task that container spinning up. And then once that's going, when that gets going, then the, the CI build job is running. So you can see here that now things are executing within the container. The container, as you look over here in AWS ECS sign, uh, it's actually running as active. And over here in GitLab, it's running some very basic tests, uh, the very simple test job. And once this job is running, uh, obviously the container or the task in AWS Fargate will continue to be active as well. Uh, so now over here on the left hand side, you can see that the job succeeded. And over here in Fong, let's give it a moment and let's go back to the cluster. Uh, yeah, it's already it's it's already um, decommissioned that particular task. So now the task that was spun up to execute your CI job, um, that task is no longer active in Fong. It, it's taking care of what it's needs to do. So, so a quick recap in terms of kind of what we've quickly run through today um, in the speed run is that we've quickly run through installing GitLab Runner on an AWS EC2 instance. 
configuring the runner in AWS Foundry Driver, installing the AWS Foundry Driver for the custom executor, creating the ACS standard definition, and then running a simple pipeline as well. Uh, so again, we've sort of set up this basic config. So again, for, for self-managed um, users or customers that are interested in hosting their build containers, um, maybe on Fargate for cost purposes or for other needs, um, this is the initial pattern that we've created to, to enable or to allow for that. In subsequent speedrun videos, I'll probably cover um, setting up the runner and the Fargate driver on Fargate as well. Uh, instead of it having to live on a, on an EC2 instance. And then in a subsequent um, speedrun video, uh, we we'll probably also cover the use of code build to take care of things like Docker and Docker builds on the AWS Foundry. All right, cheers. Talk to you soon.